Hi guys, it's Eleanor and I love Love Don't Starve and today we're gonna opt for a UI game and make the survival meters from it. Those are the little UI elements in the corner of the game that show you your hunger, sanity and health levels. Can I also take a moment to say a big yay for the 100 subscribers we had last week? It made me so so happy. And I have created a Discord server now so we can all socialize. Come join me and I'll be very, very happy to meet you. If you're enjoying these videos, consider subscribing. And without further ado, let's get started. I have quickly drawn these very impromptu assets as placeholders. And we have a base background, a fill, and an icon. And I'm going for an air meter. So say if your character goes underwater and they're running out of air or something among those lines. But this doesn't really change the code. So you can use those UI elements to show any stat to the player. So we start with an empty project. Let's add our sprites. And we need to click on each one of them and change the texture type to the sprite. And then right click and create UI image. That would be the parent element of our meter. Change the image to the background image and update the size depending on the proportions of your sprite. And as a child of this, create another UI image and set the source of this to be the fill sprite. Just one more, which would be the icon. Don't forget to update the size and to name your objects appropriately so you know what's what. So now if we go to our game, we can see our visuals appearing correctly. Go back to the fill image and set the image type to felt. And now we have this fill amount property that we can control and that changes the amount of the image that is displayed on the screen. By default it's set to the circular effect, but we want to change that to vertical. So we mimic the way it's done in Don't Starve. Let's start scripting now. Add a new script to the meter object and let's open that up. We we'll start by adding unityengine.ui at the top so we can work with the UI elements. And now we need a bunch of variables public image fill, a private flow maximum, and I'm setting this to 250, a private minimum, and I'm setting this to zero, a private flow interval, and I'm using 30, but that is very, very high, and you probably want something smaller for your game, unless you want it to be super hard or something like that. I'm using a really big number just for quick testing. And then we need private flow current amount, and a private float current amount percentage. And the reason why we need two of this is because our fill amount goes from zero to one and our actual stat goes from zero to 250. So we need to match this value to a value between zero and one. And we'll do that later. So in our start function, let's just initialize the current amount to be the maximum because this is the start of the game. And the, in the update function, we want to decrease to stat with time, but only the current amount is more than the minimum. We don't want to go lower than the minimum. And now let's just do some very simple math together. Let's say that the current amount is five. So five would be a certain percentage of the maximum, which is 250. So let's say that the current amount is A and the maximum is M. And we end up with this equation. And if we quickly work through it, this ends up with x equal 100a over m. But x right now is a number between 0 and 100 and we want that to be between 0 and 1. So let's just divide by 100 and there we go. We end up with a over m or current amount divided by the maximum. Let's implement that. We go back to our script and we say current amount percentage equals current amount divided by maximum. And let's set the fill amount to this dot fill amount equals current amount percent. So if we go to the game and click play, we can see this in action. It, it decreases very quickly and then it stops at zero. And to help you incorporate this in your game, let's add two more functions quickly. Add a public function add amount, which takes a float and adds it to the current amount. And then another one that does the opposite of this. You will also want to add some sort of listener to trigger an event when the stat is at zero but that would really depend on the rest of your project. This should be pretty easy to incorporate in your games and it can look very, very cool given well-designed sprites. If you have made it so far, thank you for sticking to the end. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to check out the Discord server and come socialize. See you next week. Bye.